Profile with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Wednesday, October 17th, 2012. James Burns going over the second presidential debate. And uh, this time around, I'm joined by a special guest. He is my dad, and he is also the host of the Cannabis Corner. You can check it out online, CannabisCorner.com. Dad, welcome to the Freedom Files podcast. Thank you, James, and thanks for having me. All right, so this uh, town hall-style debate that was hosted nationwide on almost every network, it uh, was Obama versus Romney, round two, and you had uh, uh, CNN's Candy uh, Crawley as the moderator. It went on for uh, 90 minutes. They had a total of 82 uh, supposedly uncommitted voters in New York because that's where the debate took place yeah. in some college in New York. And they went over several things. We're going to talk about that as well. And I'm also going to uh, read some of my uh, tweets that I put out there. Of course, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's Elburnzo, at Elburnzo. So check that out. It's all up at freedomfiles.us. So the first you know, discussion they got into was over the unemployment situation. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought that, uh, you know, of course, Romney came out swinging, talking about how, uh, of course, how, and it's true. I mean, what he was saying, uh, there's a lot of people still looking for work and that the numbers really don't look any better, even though the Obama people try to make it sound that way. But, you know, the the stark reality of the numbers is that 23 million people are still out of a job in America and that the amount of people on food stamps is up 50 percent. So uh, I think that. You know, he came out pretty strong there, and it was sort of, I think, hard for Obama to deny because, you know, regardless of what he inherited from what he left, you know, what he came into, he still didn't, uh, you know, do near near of any of the things that he had promised he was going to do. So uh, I thought Romney came out pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, and uh, my first tweet was uh, in regard to uh, the unemployment situation. And uh, here's what I said. Are, any of, are either of these guys going to repeal NAFTA, CAFTA, or GATT? And then, of course, me being a smartass, all signs point to no. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also, too, if you remember during the debate, it was, of course, later in the debate, but Romney said that he wanted to do further trade agreements with Latin America and yeah. stuff like that. Well, it's basically well, what NAFTA. Caft, CAFTA is Central America. That's what I mean. That's what NAFTA yeah. and CAFTA are. Is and neither one of them, neither the North that, American Free Trade Agreement or the Central American Free Trade Agreement, our GATT has worked out for us. No, they gave jobs away. That's yeah. what I'm saying. They it said. stripped factories out of our out of our continent, not, right. not only here in the U.S., but up in Canada and Mexico, by the way. That's right. It, and sent them overseas. It hurt. It hurt not only us. It also hurt the, uh, the countries that we were trying to so-called – you know, get this trade thing going, it hurt them probably as bad as us. So. Yeah, so I don't exactly see any more free trade agreements working out so well. No, I don't think that they, <laughs> they I don't think those agreements that Clinton and all them started. And Al Gore, the and inventor Gore. of the Internet, the uh, man bear pig, and right. snake oil salesman and, of the 21st century. And the owner of everything now, apparently. Yeah, everything yeah. green, you yeah. know. No wonder he's an advocate for green stuff. Yeah. You know, he's going to make billions of dollars off of sure, it. Sure, they gave $90 billion to that and only $2 billion to the oil industry. Uh, so. Speaking of green, that was the next topic they went into, uh, the energy situation with the rising gas prices. Of course, you heard about last week what happened in California. Right. The prices rose dramatically, like, right. what, a dollar? A least. dollar, yeah. It was crazy. And so uh, somebody in the audience, one of these 82 uncommitted voters in New York, asked the president, what is the energy department going to do to lower the gas prices? And why is the energy department, in con- why do they have a say or control over that? Well, you know, <laughs> but when, the, when they used to let the oil and gas industry regulate their industry, that industry never had any trouble. It's when the government stepped in and they started with that windfall profits tax thing and all of that. When all of that came about, then they, they, they put this regulation on an industry that couldn't afford, you know, it, you just can't survive with those kind of regulations and all that. They need to let the oil and gas people run the oil and gas business. They, those are the people that are smartest enough to do it and all, not some government watchdog group or somebody that thinks what's going on there. because from what i can tell you and i worked in the oil field in the oil industry i was an engineer with halliburton and all and from what i can tell and what i hear from a lot of these people there's very few of them even know how the oil field even works how energy's even derived it out of the ground and all and i don't think 
for a second that we need to have people like that in control. We need Absolutely to not. I mean, it should be about competition. That's exactly right. And, and of course, another thing they discussed, not only with the gas prices, was trying to make us more energy inef- inefficient, you know, yeah. or efficient. <laughs> yeah. Notice none of them meant, uh, meant growing hemp. Exactly. And, yeah. that was, and that was my next tweet. I talked about, are either of these gents going to legalize hemp to help make us energy independent? And, I, and then, of course, yep. me once again being a smartass, as I am, yeah. I said, don't bet on it. 30 so bar- so 30. why didn't they talk about that? They yeah. talked about everything else, wind jobs, right. solar jobs, right. oil, gas, but nothing about legalizing uh, hemp. 30 barrels per acre. Think of that. 30 barrels per acre. We could grow all and replace all of the oil that we export from overseas. We could grow right here in America as a renewable crop every year. And and not to mention the 50,000 products you could put on the retail market that would generate billions and billions and hundreds of billions of dollars in sales tax revenues. for. And think of, just think of that, that industry. How many people would just go to work? They talk about manufacturing. I mean, how many jobs do you think would come about just making the equipment to bring the hemp industry back into fruition again? And that ties into everything, not only the uh, energy, but also employment, like you said, manufacturing. Sure, manufa- so, so that covered a lot of bases. Sure it did. And, and the national debt, which we'll get into in a moment. The next thing they moved on to was basically the tax rates, deductions, credits. And once again, I asked the question in my tweet about this. Um, will Barry and Mittens abolish the income and property taxes? Not bloody likely. No. I mean, that's just, it's just, this is a, it seems like it's just a systemic infection. And, and, and it, it's all contributing to a downtrod in this country. And it's taken us to the edge of the cliff. And, you know, there's no reason for it. There's absolutely no reason for it. I mean, just, would you buy a ticket on a train that you knew was fixing to fly off a thousand foot cliff? Of course you wouldn't. <laughs> And that's basically what we're doing, that we're being forced into buying a ticket to a train ride that we know is going to take us right off the edge of the cliff. And I I guess when it leaves the summit, when it's too late to back the train up and get back down the track, Americans will will then wake up and say, oh, my God, we're free floating out in air. Just like Wally Cowley, just looking down. Yeah, yeah, looking down. Oops. Yeah. And then that's all all you hear. Then this. Yeah. And, of course, the next thing, which ties into taxes and deductions and everything, is, of course, uh, they talked about the national debt and uh, the budgets and everything. And Well, you know, let me interrupt you just a second, James. You know, another point I wanted to make, you know, they didn't, neither one of them talked about the hemp industry and, what, and how we could replace all of our fuel and all that. And also, too, if you bring about the hemp industry, then you get rid of this stupid drug war and this, and this, this insanity that's been going and, on and for— so that, that's something that was actually kind of briefly touched up. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't really actually brought up. No. But the Romney, AK-47. Rom- Romney, actually, to his credit, he tried to. Yeah. But we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, so let's hold on that subject. Okay. Because it, it is an interesting topic because they, didn't, they should have talked about it. Sure. But they didn't. And of course, then they moved on to female uh, inequality in the workplace. And honestly, I know we're both guys, so yeah. we don't really get it. But I, I would say compared to the way things were, say, 10 years ago or 50 years ago, Things are a lot more fair in the workplace well, now. They're a lot more fair, but but here's what's happened too, is that you have a lot more educated women now, and and I mean, listen, I'm I, I am I don't ever understand any guy that that is put down by some women doing a job either a that a man can do or or holding an executive position job that could do it better than a man. I say that. You know, we should embrace these women. There, there's a lot of really brilliant women. There's a lot of capable women out there. And, and one thing about women, when you get them on the project and all, the project gets done. There's a lot of men that, you know, tout, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this or this. But when you get them in the, in the actual thing of what's going on, nothing ever really materializes that. You don't see that out of women. So I think well, men are hurting well, the themselves. The way it should be yeah. in the employment business when, you, when you're looking to hire somebody, it shouldn't be based on their, their color, on what religion they believe in or Absolutely not believe in, not, yeah. or what their gender happens to be. It is whoever's the best qualified for this position, and it should be this amount of money. Yeah. It doesn't matter what sex you are. doesn't matter what race that's you right. are. doesn't matter what sexuality you are. That's right. That's the way it should be. It should be blind. Yeah, that's right. You shouldn't. You, this, this job is for this amount of money, and if you're 
more qualified as a woman to get it, then you get that money. And if some man gets it, he doesn't get more money. I, I agree with that. Yeah. I, because and this this is just what I was saying about women being more educated. They 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 are they are now more qualified for a lot of these jobs that before they didn't have the chance to apply for. And then moving on, uh, they uh, one of the uh, people in the audience asked Mitt Romney about how he's different than George W. Bush because right. they're both in the same party, right? The Republican Party. Of course, you and I both see it as being one of the same party, the Republicans and Democrats, part of the two-party puppet show. One thing he could have said that he didn't say is he could have said, I'm richer than George. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't say that. Of course, he got a little bit of flack, remember, during the GOP presidential debates when he uh, you know, asked Rick Perry to do a $10,000 right, bet. Right. That didn't go so well for right. him. They, that was one of his faux pas. Yeah, it's like he's got that in his yeah. front pocket. But you know? I, w- I would say this. It was interesting. Interesting because it seemed like at first Romney was kind of caught off guard with that question, yeah. but he did cite out several examples sure how he was did. different. But then Obama came in and started praising Bush yeah. about a couple That's of things. Right. So it seemed kind of weird, but yeah. at the same time, it just shows me how these two guys are pretending to be different than each other I, and different from Bush, but the truth is they're basically all one and the same. That's right. If you'd have taken somebody that didn't know Obama was debating and he just, all you could hear was his voice, you would have thought he was a campaign manager for George Bush <laughs> that was running against Romney because he, he did. He just listed all four or five things that George was for. That, well, that It's no surprise uh, because he picked up exactly where Bush left off well, on exactly. most of the issues. Right, that's and right. And if, if Romney becomes the 45th puppet, I mean president, He's going to pick up exactly where Obama left off. So there well, really is no difference. That's right. And then, of course, uh, one of the uh, members of the audience, an African-American gentleman uh, who had voted for Obama in 2008, mm-hmm. had become disenfranchised, like a lot of Americans have. A lot of people voted for Obama because they didn't like McCain. Yep. They didn't like the past two terms of Bush. And they actually saw Obama as different, right. as a real opportunity to turn things around. Of course, Obama's let down a lot of people. And he, he asked Obama, what are you going to do to earn my vote again. Yeah, and, and I like that, that not only that he's African-American, but that he is, you know, telling the president, I'm disappointed with your performance of four years. How am I to think that the next fours aren't going to be just the same or worse? You know, Because there's a misconception out there that, that the entire African-American community are going to support Obama. No That's right. What. And I I, I'm sure that a, a large majority of them will. Yeah. But there's also a growing number of African-Americans that are jaded by the whole thing, not well, just Obama, but the entire system. Well, and there was a lot of African Americans that vote, didn't vote for uh, Obama in the first place, exactly. the first time so, around. So, so it's it's not a hundred percent right. And I think that that the average Black American out there is is smart enough to realize that they aren't better off now than they were four years ago. Not better off than they like they thought they were going. Well, to Well, I be. would like to believe that the average American realizes right. that because I I don't. I don't see us as white America, oh, black no, America. No, I, I didn't mean. Is, I know. But no, I didn't I'm mean like saying, that. I was just referring to the black vote. I know. Yeah. I know what you're saying. But, so, but I would like to see us as well. That's the same. That's the problem. Because like they both both these guys mentioned, we are a nation of immigrants, and we should go that way. I mean, I realize that we have a different pigments and we have different beliefs and we have different heights. And yeah. I was cetera. talking with a black gentleman the other day that actually said this statement. He said that he believed that white people got to buy things cheaper than black people. And I had, and he was serious. And I said, well, when I, you know, when I went to the gas pump the other day, I saw that black button and white button, but I didn't know what that was all about. Is that what that was? If I'd have pushed white, then I'd have got my gas cheaper. And I said, and you know, when I went in the grocery store too, I saw, I saw that sign that said the right three aisles were for yeah. black only and the left three aisles were for the yeah. white. So I, I said, I, you know, when I went up to the register, I did notice her pushing another button. Was, yeah. was she pushing the white or black button? You know, and he kind of, he finally realized that what he had said was, you know. Well, was this gentleman, like, dressed up in kind of like a 50s uh, suit? <laughs> well, did, did he fall through some sort of time vortex? And- that's, it's exactly what I told him. I said, sir, you're living in the past. I said, five decades ago, you might have had an argument about inequality and all that. I said, but there's been a lot of things done to separate that. And I do know, I do understand that there's that there are feelings of these, of these things that happened in the past, but there is nobody alive today that was responsible for that. And white people generally today aren't like that they're like me if you're a decent person your color of your skin yeah. doesn't mean anything and, and the problem is there, there are races in every group sure there, there are black races white races the list goes exactly. on exactly so it's something we're never going to get past fully but i would say that number has dwindled over the decades tremendously and I, it's like i told him you're 
your character is not based on your culture. Your character is based on what you, as an individual, show people that you are, and that's what. And and he was he seemed shocked by that. But I told him, I said, "You're living in the past," you know, because I know other black people that were close by there that I talked to. They they just went, "That guy's crazy," yeah. you know. So well, there's crazy people in every bunch. So right. moving on to uh, immigration, because we are a nation of immigrants. They both had a chance to talk about their stance on uh, immigration policy. Right. And Romney actually did make a very valid point, and I don't like to give him credit for anything, but anyways, he, he talked about the fact how Obama did have a supermajority for the first two years sure. of his presidency. Sure, could have passed anything. Yet, yet he didn't lift a finger no. regarding immigration. No. So, so exactly who is that that Obama is to blame? Well, and also, too, think about not just a few months ago, when the elections, when they finally decided it was going to be Romney and all that and all, remember Obama came up with this on the news saying that they had passed this measure that they weren't going to send any more children back to Mexico whose parents were living and had been working here, in regards if they were legal or not. You know, we're just not going to grab them up off the streets and take them back and all. Well, all of a sudden. It, at that point, then immigration was important to him. But yet, in his first year in office, when he said he was going to do something, when he had the opportunity and he had the Congress and the Senate on his side, he failed to do anything. And I thought that was a very strong point for Romney. And I'm, I, I agree with Romney. We have a legal system. It's sure it's not. It, it needs to be expedited. It certainly need. I know of, of Spanish people families that have been waiting for twenty years to get their status, and they've yeah. gone through the right channels. But and I, I would say this: most people that are here illegally are here with the best of intentions. Sure they're, they are. they're not criminals. They're not terrorists. Yeah. They came here just like our ancestors and did because been, they wanted to make a better life for themselves. Yeah. But and at the same time, the system is kind of working against another them. thing people got to understand too regardless of their status these people have been working here working in jobs that for the most part a lot of if if white people wanted those jobs or black people won those jobs or, or others wanted them they could have gone and got those jobs those people went and got those jobs because they were available and they've worked real hard and all and that they, they shouldn't be punished for that and all just because they haven't gotten their legal status yeah. yet but one thing people fail to realize those people have been paying insurance bills they've been paying rent they've been paying electric bills all that all what what would our economy be like if we took That's very 10 true. million people's what 10 million people are putting into our economy if we just took that away from our economy yeah. nobody ever I, I'm that. definitely a, against massive deportation, but at the same time, the, but there is the a cri- process. The criminals that are here, the real criminals, yeah. the, the MS-13 types, sure. the, the gangbangers, etc. Well, we need to get rid of them anyway. Exactly. That don't, I don't give a damn if they're legal yeah. or illegal. Yeah. If you're if you're promoting gang activity or doing something like that, then by God, you should be rounded up if you're not if you're here illegally. Yeah. But. Uh, next topic, they went into the debate. They, they talked about Libya, of course. Mm-hmm. And in uh, and several instances throughout the debate, Romney and, and uh, Obama actually got at either's throat. And this was one of the big ones. Yeah. Because Obama, as president, he did do this to his credit. He said, look, I'm responsible for this. Yeah. I'm the commander-in-chief. And whatever decisions are made, it's on my watch. Right. And, yeah, I, I will agree. Romney tried to, to make something out of it. He tried yeah. to get some political points out of it whenever he... You know, a couple weeks ago when he made a whole big to-do about the situation that happened in Libya. And, but I don't, I don't agree with either one of them, but it was wrong of Romney to do that. Well, I think, I think what he was trying to say was, you know, if that they, the people there had requested more security. Well, yeah. And if they, if they had requested more security of the State Department, then they had reason to believe that there was some a, a heightened or terrorist attack yeah. or some threat or something. So, and the fact that they were denied that and then, and then they had the attack, I do believe that was the point he was trying to drive home, though, that, you know, this was a high-level state department requests it's in like hey could you bring a couple more bags of peanuts in <laughs> yeah. here you know and so and this is something that not only hillary clinton should have been on top of but the guy that's in charge of the cia or whoever and also the, the pentagon the president the pentagon and the president himself this this wasn't just something that you do in a memo that oh, yeah. slipped under the door you know and so well there, there were some points that romney made but at the same time i don't like that the way he went about well i think it. i think that uh I think that it sounded kind of cold yeah. and callous. Yeah. But but then we have to also remember this, though, the fact that we have embassies throughout the world, right. hundreds of embassies and ambassadors, and that that's a lot of security. That's a lot of money and staff. So, it, But I do agree that the, the situation in Libya was our fault because yeah. we got involved, uh, the president got involved, right. without congressional consent, by the way. That's it was right. our little war, just like he's trying to push in Syria. 
So in the end, he sh- it should have been prudent of him to make sure Beef it up. that Ambassador yeah. Stevens was properly protected. Well, with all that had happened in Libya since, you know, they, I mean, they killed Gaddafi. I mean, you know, our imba- they should have heightened the security regards if it yeah. had been requested well, well, or not. I think what we see happen, what we saw happen in Libya was, was blowback to, you know, the past decade plus, several decades yeah. of foreign intervention. Sure. So that's, it wasn't about some YouTube video. And no. you know, it, it's just one of those situations where if this we, was just if a, we would have stayed out of it, yeah, yeah, we wouldn't have had this problem. Right. But anyways, we got to move. Well, on. you got to look to the kettle's boiling over, yeah. And, and we're, Americans are a good excuse for these people. They hate us. So anytime yeah. something comes up, it's easy to say it's our fault. Yeah. You know. So well, it's it's not American people. It's the government. The government. The, that's well, right. What the government's been doing for. Well, they think that's us. But well, yeah, because they didn't. We, well, unfortunately, because of our system, you know, yeah. which is it's supposed, the same in Iran. It's supposed to, our system is supposedly a republic, which yeah. is supposed to be represented by the people. We're right. supposed to be the boss, the employer, etc. Unfortunately, we don't. So, you know, and Iran the same way there's a lot of people there that really like americans but their their government hates us so we're perceived that everybody well, action hates equals us. reaction you see what we did in the <coughs> 50s we overthrew Mossadegh and the legitimate iranian government we installed the dictator to the shah, the shah and yeah. what was the result of that yep. the islamic revolution and there's, the, the installment. they took care of it yeah <laughs> yeah so so that's the problem here we don't bother to think about cause and effect and that's, that's right. one of the big reasons why a lot of people in the middle east are pissed off at us and right we now. don't learn from the past i mean no, we don't this isn't the first time this stuff has happened no, it isn't. it's this is a this is almost like a cycle like like the the global moisture around the globe yeah. i mean and then of course uh, we move on to the assault weapons uh, question yeah and this is where we're going to get into the uh, cartels and right. the, where they should have talked a little bit more about uh the, the drug war right and Romney brought up something about Fast and Furious. Now, Fast and Furious was that whole gun running scandal right. where, at first, Eric Holder, the um, attorney general of the Department of, uh, of Justice, yeah. the DOJ, was accusing uh, people that are gun owners, uh, Second Amendment types, uh, gun shoppers, uh, what, people that go to the uh, gun sales. Right of sending guns to Mexico to the cartels. Right. But it turned out it was the government. It was the ATF doing it. That's right. And when Romney brought this up, I found this very interesting. Mm -hmm. The moderator, Candy Crowley, brushed it aside. Yeah. And when Obama got up, he mentioned nothing about it. Nothing. He went straight from addressing uh, this other gun issue about, you know, banning assault weapons. Right. And I, I got a comment about that in a second, a tweet. He went from that to talking about education. Well, see, the, what he did, what in his best way to avoid it, he stood up and said, well, Governor Romney and I do agree that education and parenthood at home is the key to getting rid of these AK-47s, basically. Yeah. But didn't, you know, just sidestep the fact yeah. that the government and the ATF were yeah. the ones running the guns he, he to the did, cartel. Candy and Obama said jack about Nothing. Fast and Furious, which is a huge scandal. Huge. A lot of people in Mexico and in the U.S. And the cartels aren't buying. Buying guns that we buy at selling gun shows no, here in America. Of not. They don't you want those cap you guns. You can't get fully automatic weapons no. in gun shows. Those you can't are cap get grenades. pistols compared to exactly. you know, automatic nine millimeters. I yeah. mean it just And and here's something that I, I, I just really chaps my hide. Every single time a person that is a, a, obviously a gun grabber, all about gun control, but especially those that that, that pretend that they support gun rights like Obama does. Right. How he talked about how weapons designed for war don't belong on our streets, which i.e. means in our hands. Yeah. But here's a tweet I asked Mr. the Mr. President Day. Uh, once upon a time, um, there's this weapon of war called the musket, which our colonial ancestors used to fight for freedom mm-hmm. and independence. That was a weapon of war. That wasn't just for deer hunting. Yeah. That just wasn't for sporting or That's you're going right. down to the gun range. I don't even think they had gun ranges back then. <laughs> well, they might have. For, yeah. for training the militia right. in the Continental Army. But, yeah, okay, an AK-47, a dangerous weapon. Yeah. A knife is a dangerous weapon. A baseball bat is a dangerous weapon. But... Well, Obama the, the, made the point that, that look at the violence that's being done with Saturday Night Special still, the twenty five calibers. Well, yeah, and, and he mentioned something about Chicago land. Yeah. Yeah, you know, where he comes from. Chicago. A very anti gun city. Yeah. It's I don't even think you can get a gun legally there. Uh, and yet gun violence is through the roof. So it goes to show you that 
in the same, and, and everybody knows this. This isn't nothing new. The If you outlaw guns, only the criminals will have the guns because the guns that the criminals have, they didn't get legally. Yep. They got them on the street illegally. Exactly. So you think that's going to stop? It's just like making drugs illegal. Mm -hmm. That's why they're available on the streets because you've made them illegal. Yep, exactly. And uh, before we get to that comment, because they didn't touch on the drug war, which Absolutely. they should have. Yeah, they you know, should. I will, I will give Candy and Obama credit about this, because it did seem like sometime Candy was also double teaming on, on Romney. Yeah. Every now and then it was justifiable. Like this example, you know, they point out the fact that Mitt Romney is a flip-flopper. Yeah. On uh, He bashes Obama on Obamacare, yeah. yet it's been proven over and over again that Romney care was the template of Obamacare. Sure. And another example is, of course, on the gun issue. Yeah. When he was a governor of Massachusetts, he was very anti-gun. He was. Now he's pro-gun? Yeah. It just, it well, just I'm makes me... I'm glad that he at least changed back in his, his four Second but, Amendment No, no, rights. but that's the problem, though. But you can't is just flip. Is he really for right. Second Amendment rights? Where are you, though? What is your true it, stance? Is he just doing it out of convenience to get votes and get right. elected president? Same thing when Obama did the thing about immigration. I mean, it's, it's a political tool to get people on your side and swing the vote, and it... But you, you're true. I mean, is, and Obama said when he was listing off all the things that he said he did. Well, he said, I, end, I said I was going to end the Iraq war. I ended it. Well, no, Mr. Obama, you said that you were going to end the Iraq war on day one. Yeah. And I now realize it was two and a half years later, and that probably was a long <laughs> day for you. Yeah. But no, you didn't do it on yeah. day one. And so, then, and then you not only ended that war, but you. Got the other one really going yeah, good. You exactly. Know, so. Well, I said he picked up exactly where Bush left off. And speaking of wars, I'll let you uh, comment about this because it was something they didn't touch on. They didn't yeah. really talk about the drug war. Where was it? I know. And, and I was surprised that nobody in the audience, you know, didn't connect the dots to saying, you know, if you didn't have this drug war, if you had a hemp industry that was legal, then there would be jobs for people not only on this side of the border, but also down in Mexico. And you wouldn't have to be worrying about immigrants coming over here illegally because they would be staying in Mexico. It's cheaper to live in Mexico than it is the United States. There's there's tons of Americans that are moving down there because they can live at, live for about a quarter of what it costs them to live in the United States and actually live better. Yeah. So if you had job uh, opportunities in Mexico, those people wouldn't be coming here. But the drug war, a lot of the immigration battles going on is these people that are, are carting bales of marijuana across the border because we, we're, in, we're in this country. We are so stupid that we, we will allow a drug cartel to control this business in this country when this should be a legal commodity. And you wouldn't even have be spending the twenty billion a year we spend just trying to eradicate marijuana. Yeah. And see, that's something that both Romney and Obama obviously agree on. They're both for continuing the drug war. Sure, they they're are. both for continuing this police state. There was nothing about the TSA. Nothing, nothing about uh, NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act. They're both for that. Yeah. Nothing. Patriot about, Act. Yeah. Nothing about that. Nothing about the Department of Homeland Security. No. Of course, because. You know, it's just more prime examples how those two chaps yep. are exactly alike. And I had another tweet about that. And uh, it was a little back and forth that him and Obama got into regarding yeah. blind trust and stuff. And, you know, Willard came up to Obama talking about how, you know, I have a blind trust and stuff. But, but I know you have a blind trust, too. Yeah. And your investment, you're investing money. In China. In yeah. Chinese companies. And another example. Yeah. These two are not different. No, they're not. They're not. They have blind trust. And, of course, I know they don't have control over that. Right. But still, their money is being put towards and helping the Cayman China. Island shelters and stuff. You know, the uh, Romney pointed out that Obama had those two, and and then they both parted, just kind of laughing at each other, and of course. never really said anything about it. No, no, know? no. They're they're both laughing because yeah. they know they're both making a yeah. ton of money. That's exactly and right. They're both. I mean, obviously, meant Romney's wealthier. Well, sure. But but Rom but Obama's getting wealthy. Yeah. With each passing year, the only the only advantage i see romney has really i mean he, he has had political experience and all and certainly probably if you compare it to obama he's probably had as much but even though he hadn't been president but over but romney is a businessman and he is an astute businessman to the point that when he undertakes a project he sees it through he doesn't you know he doesn't shift shift in midstreams and i think that's a strong point well, of his with See, I, this is the issue I have. I mean, but I, I don't know how I, that's going to play into our economy. Well, though, see, right? here's the problem. You have people 
that attack his bank capital days yeah. or praise his bank capital days. Right. They, they look at him as a savior. Then there's people that look at him as the devil incarnate. Right. I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. He did some good with bank capital. Sure he did. But at the same time, there was bad done. There was businesses destroyed. There was jobs lost. But there was also some businesses saved. and some you know. Yeah. So it goes either way. I th- well, that, I think that's business in yeah, general. Exactly. You, you, you know, it's like people who do investments. Sometimes they, they make good investments but, and they make money. Sometimes they lose. And yeah, it just, but if he really was a businessman who understood the business system, why would Mitt Romney not be talking about repealing these free trade agreements? Well, I know. And I, I think there's I, – I, it's almost like listening to him, you'd think that he doesn't really know the specifics of them. But I, he's bound to. I mean, he's, in, he's well, involved in business and well, international he, trading. And, yeah, well, I mean – that's a little different than actually going in and running an actual business. I mean, he, he did yeah. go into the Olympics and what Salt Lake and turn right. that around. But mm-hmm. anyways, I mean, they, they did talk about at the end of what manufacturing jobs. And here's something that, that really bothers me. And I, I know he wasn't the only GOP candidate that said this stuff, but it, it's like poking China with a stick. Yeah. He talked about how he was going to label China a currency manipulator and how he was going to keep China playing by the rules. Now, here's the problem. Those words are going to be seen in China yeah. as threatening. Yeah. Now, China is now a superpower, largely in part because of these different policies. Because and they own, and they've they got own so 40, many businesses. They own 45% of us. Yeah, so. and they've been built. They have the largest army in the world. Mm-hmm. They're building up their air force. They're building up their navy. they got a, at least one aircraft carrier now. they probably got a nice sub-fleet. It's getting bigger. They're getting stronger, more influential. And they influential. have the money to build more. Yeah. Plus, they have, a, they have an alliance building with Russia. And what I saw in the comments made by Mitt Romney is basically, and, and I put this in a tweet, so Mittens wants to initiate a war with China. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I mean, what else, what else would China take that as? Either, A, at best a trade war, which still can get nasty, or an actual war war. Well, here's the joke of it. Okay, 45% of y'all's debt we're holding the ticket on. B, uh, we're, our economy is doing quite well as a result of that. C, just try to uh, boss us around. You're, you're speaking on behalf of China. China, right? yeah. Just try to boss us around. What? Okay, you know, most people that talk like that, they, they, have, they sort of have some guns on their side. No. We don't have that. I'm sorry. No. And so I don't think China's taking it as too big of a threat, in other mm-hmm. words, you know. Because no. they already got our – they already got the clutches so, in us. So that that that, that question – Yeah. You know, I that, mean, it's big talk, yeah. but I'm sure but China's not the, too the damn worried is, about it. They're both Obama and Romney, once again, another example of how they're really not that different. That's right. Are both in their own way war monsters. That's exactly right. And the final question that was brought up was uh, the big uh, mess re- – what was it uh, – what, what's the word? It's a long word. Misperception yeah. that American people have, have about regarded. them. And yep. here, here was what I said, that you guys are different. <laughs> that was mine. <laughs> That's the biggest misconception. Yeah, because you have people out there. Yeah. You go down the street in my neighborhood, and you see Romney Ryan signs. Right. And you see Obama Biden signs. And, of course, in the debate, because we're going to talk about this. I know we're, we've been going on for a while now, yeah. a couple what hours, but just kidding. Uh You're going to have people after the debate. I saw this on Facebook. I saw it on Twitter. People praising Romney again. People praising Obama. Uh What was your take? I would say that neither one really trumped the other. Each each had points that were in their favor, but none of them trumped anybody. And to me, the fact that they left out about the drug war, they left out about the hemp as an alternative fuel, and, and, and... the effect that would have not only on immigration and the economy and all really lets me down big time. It's it's sort of like these new measures that are really weak. But the reality is you're educated. You've done your research. You know exactly where they stand on those yeah, issues. They're exactly they're, they. It's like they walked out of the same room together, you know. Yeah. that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat what I've said in, in past discussions on debates because I reviewed so many of them this year yeah. all the GOP presidential debates in the past couple of presidential debates and the vice presidential debate last week a debate is not like a, a baseball game it's not like a football game there is no score at the end that's right it's like I said a moment ago it depends on your opinion that's right if you're an, a Romney supporter you're going to believe Romney won if you're well, an Obama supporter you're going to believe Obama won but you know not everyone supports those guys right. some people are enlightened like you and me 
and we see the truth that it was just another song and dance. It was WWE wrestling. I really and thought at the beginning when they started debating and how they kind of stood up and they really were sort of challenging to each other the way they kind of their body language. And I'm thinking, well, this is really what I do. I'd bring, go ahead and bring the boxing gloves out and, and we'd actually gloves. have a we'd actually have a true winner. Boxing gloves. Those two yeah. sissies would just start slapping each other. Well, you know the kind where they dance around the ring, no. they kind of swing their fist out, but never really I, make contact. I did. I don't. I, I. That would be a very, very laughable fight. <laughs> I think you could get two kindergartners in a fight, and they'd put up more of a fight than yeah. those two guys. Well, that would be a powder puff match. You know, yeah, the, I just Bami Rama. I, I just don't see. Uh, maybe maybe they should go settle it on the golf course. Yeah, that's probably where they'd. Oh, like I, to I do think it. just flip a coin. You uh, know? Well, you lose either way. Yeah, this either way we don't we don't have a. Clear victor. So. Uh, final take, the uh, time differential. Obama got 44 minutes, 4 seconds. Romney got 40 minutes, 50 seconds. 10% more went to Obama. Do you think Obama. that's a really big deal? or? I don't think it made that much difference, but I do think that when Romney was trying to stretch a couple of points that, that Candy kind of cut him off yeah. prematurely. She, she cut him off. I think she did you know, three times in a row now. You've had but three. I thought she did a fair job. Well, I, mean, I, I, I not, don't not, know. She wasn't okay. as good as Martha, I didn't well, think. Well, she wasn't. A, I thought Martha did a terrible job. Oh, you just thought she did. How worse? many times did she allow Biden to interrupt Ryan? Oh, well, that went on all night. And, yeah. And here's a, here's another example. It, it seemed like Obama, when he was watching this on Air Force One, because he watched the vice presidential debate, they have a photo of it. Yeah. And I think Obama just had a light bulb go off. Yeah. Hey, I'm just going to use the Biden strategy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and of course, you know, uh, Mittens, you know. Took the bite, yeah. you know. He took the bait, and he he started doing it as well. Yeah, I think that that was just to even the playing ground a little bit. And, and what's sad is these town hall debates are supposed to be about engaging the people, right? Not and I I wonder how many of the people that got to ask a question weren't weren't plants, you know? Yeah, see, because, because some of the questions seemed real specific. Well, see, that's yeah. that's the issue though. All eighty two people probably each had eighty two different questions. But they had to submit them. Yeah. They had to submit them to, to CNN. They didn't have to submit them uh, supposedly to the Commission on Presidential Debates or Romney or Obama's you know, parties, yeah. their campaigns. But they did have to you know, so they, get them So they screened. had an idea of the question. They, yeah. had, they had to be screened by somebody. Yeah. So they weren't going to ask them an off-the-wall question. But, and that's probably, I'm sure there was somebody in that crowd that might have had a question about but, the hemp industry. But here's, that didn't here's get the to joke ask of it. it all. Why would you have 82 people up there when you know damn sure well that maybe at best 10 percent of them are going to get to ask yeah the five to eight at the most yeah. yeah the rest of them didn't get to ask so no. it does make you wonder did those people also have questions or did they just get to sit up there just to look like they right and i'm also wondering too say there were 25 questions given up and five of them were about some of the issues that weren't mentioned that we talked about you know, then they just threw those out, you see. Exactly. And then, and then only allowed the, the specific, because the way the wording of the questions come in, this didn't sound like it was just a general audience that questions were coming from. It was almost like they were actors and they were reading a specific line given to them because well, just for the nature of the question. Yeah. You know? I, I think maybe, maybe the, the questions might have been predetermined, but I think those were real people because a lot of them stumbled. They were nervous, obviously, yeah. talking to these two and being on national TV. Yeah. So it, it might be 50-50. It's hard to say. So I, you never well, know. Well, the college kid that when he read his out and all, it just, it just seemed like a script he was reading. Well, you know? I mean, that part's true, but I think he was a real person. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, no, I thought he was a real person, but I don't. I think that the questions were written for them, you know, to make it sound more – official or whatever yeah. i'm not sure or or maybe to make it more specific so they didn't yeah. you know just randomly run off with it or yeah. i don't know yeah my final take on this before uh, we wrap up is my beef with the commission on presidential debates which is controlled by both parties republicans and democrats they didn't allow any of the other third party candidates in fact jill stein and her vp candidate of the green party they were there protesting they were trying to gain admittance and guess what happened to them? They got locked out. They got arrested. Oh, they got arrested? Yep. Wow. They got arrested. Wow. Yeah, that, that's freedom for yeah, you, isn't I, it? I think that's wrong. Now, I, I'm, I'm not saying that every single third-party candidate should be up there, but anyone up there like Gary Johnson that has enough ballots on enough states to get that magic number, 270 electoral votes, yeah. should be allowed to Certainly. partake in the, the discussion. I'm, I, don't, I think Ron Paul should have been in there. 
Well, I mean, he's not a nominee, though. Yeah, I know, but... If, I, if he would have left the GOP and ran as a third-party candidate, yeah. then, yeah, if he got on enough ballots as an independent or a libertarian, then, right. yes, I would agree, but but since he's but not... they should have let the ones that did qualify Yeah, like in, Gary, right? Johnson Gary Johnson and maybe one or two others. Yeah. But anyways, I, I thought it was wrong of them to arrest the Green Party presidential candidate and her vice president, but right. once again, it just shows you that there's this two-party puppet show. We really don't have a say anymore, and it's you're not voting for... A lesser evil. They're both about the same. It's yeah. alien versus predator. It's, we lose either way. You know, here's our team. We've got leader A and we've got leader B. Yeah. If you decide you don't like leader A, well, don't worry. We have leader B exactly. for you. And it's the same company. And yeah. Just yeah. But if you're interested in watching the next uh, comedy bit, it's going to be on Monday, the final uh, Commission on Presidential Debates debate between Romney and Obama. That's going to be Monday, October 22nd. But following that is going to be a real debate. Yeah. And it's the freeandequal.org third-party debate. Really good. Four candidates from the Libertarian Party, Constitution Party, Green Party, and Justice Party. For more information about that one, go to freeandequal.org. That is freeandequal.org. And, of course, uh, fire off your website. Let people know how they can find out about you. Of course, the CannabisCorner.com, and you can go to YouTube, Cannabis Corner, and find our videos. But what I wanted to ask you was, where is the next presidential debate being held at? Uh, is it in... Uh, it's, uh, I think it's Boca Raton, Florida. So you okay. may have a couple of uh, senior citizens up there asking about Medicaid. and. Uh, Are they going to uh, allow free participation walkers. from the audience this time? No, or? no, no. It's just going to be a typical debate. Yeah. This, like uh, the first debate. So right. it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Well, they'll out. definitely have a different line of questioning for that age group in Florida. You, versus, you would think so because yeah. that area, especially Boca Raton, really hurt. Is, is, very, yeah. is a very high level. Surely they don't that think they're better off. Four years later. Well, probably not, but there's yeah. a lot of senior citizens, a lot of retirees down there. Yeah. Plus, Florida is going to be one of the key states in the upcoming election. It could even decide the election, just yeah. like uh, the Hanging Chad did back in uh, 2000. Exactly. Uh, That's right. So, Dad, uh, Kerry Burns, host of the Canvas Corner, thank you so much for uh, guest hosting. Enjoyed with it, me. James. It was a very uh, good discussion, and uh, I look forward to the next one. And, of course, we'll be back with uh, the next presidential review debate on uh, what, Tuesday? Uh -huh. And that's going to come up on October 23rd, 2012. And as always, be sure and check out our website, freedomfiles.us.